What is up, Facebook? Hope everything's going great tonight. Uh, just working here. It's uh, April the 20th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, just working. Got a lot of stuff on our plate. Uh, I've been running some ads tonight. Some Facebook ads, some Instagram ads. <clears throat> and I uh, thought I'd just take a moment to take a break. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, thought I'd just take a break real quick and, and, and hop on. I'm on my first, let's see, I'm on my fan page, I think, Jason Dill page. Um, there's quite a few business owners that are on this page. This page, by the way, is designed for small business owners. That's what it's for. So go on live and uh, fire away any questions. If you know a small business owner, Share this page with them. I want to answer any questions that I possibly can right now. Uh, we'll talk about anything from taxes to advertising to generating cash flow to you name it. Um, <clears throat> mostly just designed for you know, traditional businesses. I'm not not really. Uh, I don't really want to talk much about uh, MLMs or or anything along those lines. Uh, but we will certainly talk about any kind of whether it's an e-commerce, whether it's brick and mortar. I'll give you I mean, we'll stay in here as long as you want. <clears throat> Share this. Maybe maybe, you know, someone who is a small business owner that has a question right now. I'm not an expert in the PPP process um, uh, with the loans, but I know people. I can. I should be able, hopefully, to see questions. If you're asking uh, any questions, pop them, pop them on, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to see those. Or if you want to join in on the conversation, I can bring you live on the screen. I think I've figured out how to do that. I think we'll give it a shot. I mean, I don't have my staff with me tonight. I'm kind of doing this here alone and unafraid. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, um, we'll talk about anything. We'll talk about, I mean, you know, anything in the real estate, anything in the uh, e-commerce, selling inventory, selling products, selling whatever you're selling, whatever service you're providing. We can talk about it. And again, I'll be happy to bring you in or we can see you on video as well. <clears throat> I've got a couple guys that's supposed to be logging on here shortly. Hopefully we'll get them logged on. Uh, if you're in Anderson or Knox County, Tennessee, if you're in East Tennessee, we've got a uh, a Zoom meeting call designed strictly for entrepreneurs. It's entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs throughout this time. That Zoom call, we've got uh, Mayor Frank. She's going to be a special guest. Mayor Burton, he's going to be a special guest. Rick Meredith from the Chamber of Commerce in Anderson County, he's going to be moderating the call. Um, we've got Dale Cantrell, an attorney, um, highly sought after attorney in East Tennessee. He's going to be talking a little bit there. And then also I'll be talking about how to market no money. No, there's no real secrets. There's no real tricks. It just takes work. You got to do it at the end of the day. Let me share this over on, uh, on a couple other pages here. So guys, we're just talking. Uh, we're talking everything business tonight. Um, share. I'm just sharing this on a couple of pages here, so we can get, so we can get some comments coming in. Um, be happy to. Um, I don't want to share it on that page. Be happy to take any questions. Be happy to pull you in on the screen as well. Uh, if you have a small business question, fire away. We'll do the best we can to get those questions answered. Um, 
I could share it on the auction site, but I know there's going to be a, a lot of other questions not business related. So I really don't necessarily want to share it there. Um, but this is, again, it's going to be talking about small business questions, talking about marketing. How can you market on a shoestring budget? What can you be doing right now? Um, you got to understand social media. You got to understand that social media is it. I mean, that's that's where we're at. I'm not saying newspapers dead. I'm not saying print and radio is dead. I mean, it certainly works. But if you're going to reach a wide audience, and I'm talking about wide, uh, you've got to be pushing social media right now. Um, you know, if you have a budget at all, Facebook ads. Facebook ads and Instagram ads are still dirt cheap. They've been dirt cheap for a while since COVID-19 has started. And we're getting as low as three, three cents a click on a targeted ad, a targeted traffic ad. Let me be very clear about that. Engagement ads are still performing extremely well. Uh, so it really depends on what, what you're after. Um, if you want someone to simply have a conversation and talk and spread the word about your service, your product, if you're a landscaping company, maybe, um, you know, if you're doing before and after shots, create an organic post and then run a engage an engagement ad against that or, you know, run a $25 ad, but don't boost the post. Boosting a post and an engagement ad, completely separate things, completely separate animals. Okay. Very seldom. Do I ever boost a post? Um, so I see we got a bunch of watchers coming in. I'm assuming you guys are coming in on the Knoxville business page. Um, thanks for joining us, guys. I'm just doing we're doing Q&A tonight. I can bring you guys in. Uh, you can be live here on the screen with me. If you have pants on or a shirt on, of course, uh, be happy to take any questions. I don't have my staff with me tonight, so I'm kind of doing this on my own. Um, so hopefully we can. If you guys pop a question, I should be able to see it. If you want to join in, you certainly can. Um, but I'm going down the road. And so the difference is you really have three main um, paid type ads with fa with Facebook. You've got traffic ads. You've got engagement ads. And you can certainly boost a post. Uh, generally speaking, a boosted post is, is kind of like an engagement ad. It's just not as effective. Um, with those ads, you can come, you can bring it down a level. You can really zone in and hone in on targeting. I mean, if you're selling hats or t-shirts right now, I don't, I don't know what you guys are selling, uh, but if you're selling hats or t-shirts, you can certainly, and maybe it's uh, Knoxville, Tennessee hats or Knoxville, Tennessee t-shirts. You can target, obviously, Knoxville, Tennessee, whoever your, whatever your buyer looks like. If it's an 18 to 22 year old, <clears throat> 22 year old male or a female, easy, easy, easy to set that up. You know, um, and if you're working on a kind of a shoestring budget, Facebook has this massive library to teach you how to run ads. It's so easy. It's so simple. Um, I mean, we can talk about Wayfair versus South Dakota. If, you, if you're a small business owner, you know, and you do e-commerce and you don't know what Wayfair versus South Dakota is, you need to look that up. Wayfair versus South Dakota. Um, you need to understand how that's going to affect your e-commerce business because it's massive. Um, it's been a little over a year. Every state now has their own policy. We can talk about sales tax. We can talk about filing. We can talk about um, do you need to have an attorney on retainer? What type of insurance do you have? You know, it's just it's just it's just advice. I'm just just talking. Pop any questions you may have. If you're a uh, if you're a veteran and you're transitioning into a business, we can talk about how that transition process worked for me. I mean, I can't talk about every single subject, um, but certainly we can uh, we can deep dive if we need to. So I've got I just had to take a break. I've been running ads this evening, and uh, I just wanted to to hop on and take a take a little break and, and see. Uh, let me share this on my personal page. I know I've got some business owners on there. Um, we, we got a few watchers. 
So again, guys, what we're doing is it's just it's just Q and A tonight. I'm by myself. I don't have any of the crew with me. Um, we're strictly talking Q and A business, small business Q and A. Uh, if you are in East Tennessee for now, uh, if you're in East Tennessee Wednesday night, 6 p.m., we have a Zoom meeting call. Super excited about that. I wonder if I can uh, let me try something here. Hang on. Move this over here. And let's do this. Let's do this. Nope, that's not going to work. So there we go. Uh, we've got that's our speakers lined up for Wednesday night. 6 p.m. Uh, we got Mayor Frank and Mayor Burton. They're going to be talking, leading your business through the COVID-19. Rick Meredith with the Anderson County Chamber. He's going to be dis he's going to be the moderator. And I can't believe we've got him secured, but we have Dale Contrell. He is secured, and he's going to be talking about winning in small businesses and uh, probably a, uh, a few legal things to consider. And I'm going to be talking about marking on a shoestring budget and generating revenue. Pretty excited about this. We did one last Wednesday at six with 22 small business owners on there, and it was awesome. We're pretty excited about getting that set up again. Um, so, and this this software that I'm using now, um, it's pretty cool. I can teach you guys how to use this if you're a small business owner uh, and you want to do something like this. You know, it's it's pretty simple, pretty easy to use, um, very very inexpensive. As a matter of fact, there's a free version, um, so you can uh, you can utilize the free version. We can talk about Zoom meetings and how effective those are, and how are you communicating with your staff right now? How are you communicating with your teams? Um, if you're a real estate agent, how are you doing open houses right now? What's the best software? What's the best platform to use? Um, are you doing live videos? Are you doing a save video and then you're uploading that to a certain platform? Lots of things. Lots and lots of things we can talk about. Being a small business owner is tough. It's tough. But I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun too. Being a small business owner is fun. It's not for everybody. I mean, it's 8.40 p.m. Eastern time on a Monday night. And if you're a small business owner and you're kind of like, what's this guy doing? Why is he still up? It's because I care. I'm working for clients. So I want to do the best job as we can. I want to learn the process. Every ad that I do, I feel like I, get, I do a little bit better. Um, I run a little bit better advertisement. We're going to do a deep dive on that on a Zoom call Wednesday night at 6 p.m. I'll be posted on, on this page. If you're in East Tennessee, it's going to be right up your alley because you got Mayor Frank and Mayor Burton. Mayor Terry Frank is of Anderson County. Scott Burton is the mayor of Clinton. It's going to be a pretty neat call. You got any questions, just pop them on here, guys. Um, so otherwise, I'm going to get back to – I've got about uh, four more ads to do tonight. If you don't, if you are a small business owner and you provide a service or you're selling a product and you're not doing paid advertisements on both Facebook and Instagram, you're probably missing the boat. I'm not saying 110%, but you're probably missing it. And you should be doing some cross stuff too. Right. You should not just be pigeonholing yourself down one advertisement. If you're a B2B company, uh, you got to be on got to be on LinkedIn. Organic B2B on on LinkedIn is amazing. Got to be on there. Got to be on all those. Because otherwise, how are people going to find you? How are people going to know who you are? Word of mouth it spreads, but it spreads very slowly. We've got watchers. We've got uh, we've got people on here watching. That's cool. Um, problem is when I share this on other pages, I'm not sure that I can actually see 
other comments if they're if they comment on another page. Boom! This overlay is sweet. I know it is, man. You gotta you gotta you gotta create a new one. That's what you need to be doing tonight. Are you hopefully are you asleep? You better be awake. You gotta be creating an overlay. This, that overlay, by the way, took me, what I tell you, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I think you can do it faster than what I did it. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to see if I can. Man, it is sweet because you know what? I'm looking, I'm looking at this on another page, and it looks really good. Problem is the little live thing is covering up the covering up the Q and A thing. So we gotta fix that, right? Yeah, the little button that says live. The little red thing that says live on it. Gosh, now we got eleven watchers. All right, guys. So I might as well start over. So um, I'm just taking a break. I've been doing ads tonight. I've got about eight more ads to or no, four more ads I gotta do tonight. And um, if, if you if you have ever done eight or ten Facebook ads in a row, sometimes you just need to take a break. And that's just exactly what I'm doing. Um, I just need to take a quick break and try out my new software that I'm using. And uh, what's up, champ? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you on here tonight. And uh, we're just talking small business stuff in general. It, I'm an auctioneer and I sell real estate, but that's not necessarily what we're talking about tonight. We're just talking small business. <laughs> and the, the cool thing about talking about small business, man, is it's, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in the lawn care business, if you're in the tire business, if you're in the flower shop business, if you're in a barber you know, like the, the kind of cool, crazy thing is, I'm just thinking, you know, of all the barbershops and the salons, I really haven't seen any of them pushing anything of getting ready and getting excited. Like, all right, here's the deal. If I was a barber, here's what I would be doing right now. If I, okay, my son, Jacob, <clears throat> probably not my wife but I would be doing some before and after photos. I would be cutting hair and talking about how I miss cutting my customer's hair. And I'd be doing videos about it. Why? Why, if I was a barber, would I be doing videos of cutting hair just for that particular reason? Because I want to be back in front of my customers. I want to stay in front of my customers because when this thing turns on, when the switch comes back on, I want them to come back to me, number one. Number two, I want to find new customers. And the way that I can do that right now is on social media. But instead, what a lot of people's doing, let's just face it, is they're feeling sorry for themselves trying to figure out if they can open back up. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just kind of my observations of what I'm seeing. Chris says, <clears throat> here in Central Florida, chasing tornadoes in their neck of the woods today. Yeah, I just saw that on Facebook, Chris. Hopefully you stay safe. Please stay safe down there. Um, I just saw something that um, there was a video that someone had posted on Facebook, and it was literally like two streets over. Um, one of our guys who works here with at JD's, he um, his mother and father's home was not completely destroyed, but certainly – I mean, it's, it's probably going to have to be torn down in Chattanooga. You know, we had that, that come through. Gosh, I guess that was uh, last Thursday or so. Really, really scary times, which is yeah, pretty intimidating. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Back to the barber thing or videos of fixing those who did a self cut. I mean, think about it for a second. Right. You're a barber. <clears throat> what better way to get in front of your customers? A, make it entertaining because here is this poor soul, your really good friend who cut their seven year old's hair. And by the way, I did cut my seven year old's hair. I've been cutting my own hair for 20 years. Yeah, I know. You can't tell, right? But the sit, like I couldn't find my scissors. 
And the scissors that we found was completely dull. It was horrible. So finally, Natalie, my wife, she finds this scissors and they're like this big. And if you've ever cut a seven year old's hair, you only have about eight minutes. That's it. Maybe seven minutes tops. And by the time I was done, like I, I was halfway done, he's wanting up, he's getting out. So I basically took the, the clippers to the top, moved the uh, the comb up, and I'm just kind of cutting as I'm going. Hey, he, uh, he, I think he looks fine for a seven year old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna say that. And Kim says boys are easier to cut than girls. Well, yeah, I mean, think about it. Like Jed doesn't care. Like he wakes up in the morning now. He's got his he's got his pomade. He's got his hair gel, and he just does it all crazy. And he's like, "Hey, Dad, what do you think?" I'm like, "Dude, it looks awesome." Unfortunately, I'll probably be cutting his hair now for the next three or four years. So, yeah, I don't know about cutting girls' hairs. I guess <clears throat> I never cut Malia's hair before, so maybe I did one time, but I'm not. I don't think she would let me cut her hair. But really, and truly, I mean, think about how simple. This is that we're talking about if you were a barber and how you can effectively do videos to be in front of your customers and post on, your, on you know, Jim's barbershop page. I mean, how easy is that? That's that's so easy. Replace barbershop with <clears throat> name it. I mean, John, I hope I don't know if John's on your wa uh, watch and John Sherman, who owns John's Tire and Service. He and I've been talking. Crank out some videos of you changing oil in someone's vehicle or checking their brake calipers or brake pads or, you know, why do you change out a cabin filter? I don't know. Do, do you all know why you change a cabin filter out in a vehicle? I guess when it's dirty, but when do you know? Right. So you trust your mechanic. Well, do a video. Someone who brings in a vehicle and you pull their cabin filter out and there's like dust and hair and whatever all over it and this is what to look for guys that's what you got to do that's what you got to do well cool <clears throat> we got more um interaction there talking about uh cutting hair than than any other thing um let me say this if you're a realtor if you're a realtor right now you need to be watching the market you need to have a really good understanding <clears throat> of what's going on with the market. You need to understand that right now there's only in, in our particular area in the Knoxville area association of realtors and the MLS, there's 4,100 homes that's listed. Now of those that are listed, that also means that includes pending homes and it also includes homes that are for rent. That is <clears throat> uncannily low for April. Now, the spring rush is coming. It is absolutely coming, but you need to understand that so you can be talking to your clients. You need to be making content explaining that. So important. So I could talk about an hour for that. What are some of the craziest things that you find? Oof. Wow. Well, let's see, Chris. That's a great question. Um, so we just sold, I don't know about crazy, but it's ultra cool. 1860 to 1880, so just post-Civil War era, a knife sharpener. You think, hmm, well, Jason, that's not that cool. Let me see if I can pull up a photo of it. I think you'll like it. It's a knife sharpener that really, truly, I wasn't even exactly sure what it was when we first, when we first saw it. Um, this thing is, it looks kind of like a maybe like a butter churn with a crank on the side of it. Um, it was just so unique and it was from New York. It had this massive, like a uh, brass plaque on the side of it. And it was just something sharp. Let's try that. Gone. I want to pull this thing up so you can see a photo of this thing. It is incredible. And it sold for $340. Get ready for this. Share screen and boom, check that thing out. How cool is that? So along the top up here is where the uh, the knife blade can go in here and then over here and then over here. And then on the other side, so that's out of, oh, sorry, London, not New York. There's the slot that the knife goes into. 
and there's the crank you uh, crank on the uh, the handle there to make the wheel turn on the inside and uh, man th this thing is just ultra cool and in great shape never seen one there's a top view of it as you can see just never seen anything quite like that and i thought that was ultra cool so that's just one thing uh, that we found here two weeks ago um of course we found the babe ruth baseball that was ultra cool in a closet um, i mean that's just you don't find stuff like that it's just super cool um i mean we found some unmentionables right don't want to talk about those just when you go through a state sometimes it's whatever was in the home you know so some of it's kind of cool and some of it's kind of creepy um a lot of dead squirrels a lot of dead squirrels found those there recently in a home in strawberry plains so that was unique gosh i don't know chris just about every single estate we always find something super cool kim's on here kim is one of our realtors and a state specialist kim what's one of the craziest or coolest things that, that you found one of the things that we started doing is we're starting to do our top five it's jd's top five for that particular auction um and i think that's that's pretty cool um i don't know kim what's one of the things kim's been with us now for a couple of years i'm sure you found um something kind of cool oh here's a good one uh brandon says ever found a secret room yes twice it's happened two different times so the first time was in a home in Solway, tennessee which is right outside of knoxville we're going through the home and this is in the basement to get to the basement you had two ways to get into the basement one was just through the garage door <clears throat> and then the second way was a spiral staircase taking you down to the basement so then you get into the basement and there's like there's a room that would be like a tool room maybe or just some shelves and stuff in there and it was real it was ultra cool like i don't know how we ever found it but anyway you, there's this tool room and it has like all these racks on it and it had pegboard so all these racks were held by pegboard and I, I feel like maybe we were just kind of hitting the walls or something, maybe just kind of pulling on things. And like this one wall was like really loose. I was like, man, this is getting ready to fall down. Like that's what I was thinking. The pegboard's going to fall. But I get to looking and finally I can see through the pegboard, through the crack, there's hinges. I'm like, oh, here we go. There's something going on behind this. So we take that pegboard off and then here, sure enough, is this wall. We open up the wall and inside that room was like all, it was just basically a bunker built room so yeah i mean i guess it was like a safe room so that was pretty cool that was the first one the second one um in the estate that we just did in strawberry plains was right outside of knoxville this lady had built a book cabinet it was i mean it was perfect like i want one of these in my home so you got a you got a book cabinet with bookshelves and literally like there was a switch underneath one of them that you pressed and the little trigger came up and then the cabinets would just open up perfectly and behind there was racks for firearms firearms money it was like a wall safe it was it, that was ultra cool yeah so that's the that's the two main ones that we can i talk what no you can't talk about that yes lisa we have uh lisa were you involved in with one of those i think we uh we found a couple of those Actually, Lisa may have found them once she was cleaning. Lisa does a lot of our cleaning for us when we get the estates ready. Um, that was in a closet most recently. That was in a closet that um, that we found ashes in. I think we found a couple urns of ashes. Yeah. The guitar from the center gym here is cool. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we find a lot of really kind of unique that's that's one cool thing about our job is just like it's just you never really know what you're going to find it's i mean and people ask me all the time what do you got in the next auction like, i don't know i don't know <sighs> yes yes um we've seen those too chris right i'm obviously you've seen those as well like well that would be in our house too we have two boxes with two um cats in them but uh all of our cats many many yeah 
I don't know. I guess if we kept having cats, we'd probably have the same thing, which I think is kind of weird. Like, I don't know why we're keeping them. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't tell you, but yeah, just weird. But the ashes that uh, Lisa was talking about was <clears throat> not animals. And we still don't know exactly who, um, whose they were. Hmm. Yeah, that was one of our live auctions, Lisa. That was from an estate down in Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Athens area, <clears throat> where we'd sold a gentleman. Went down to pick up a gun, and there was this music box laying in the floor. He was using it for a doorstop. And um, gosh, I saw it, and I was like, well, we got something cool here. And um, of course, I asked him if it was for sale, and he said, I'll take 50 bucks for it. And I'm like, no, I think we can get more than that at an auction. I think it's pretty cool, pretty special piece. I don't, I don't even remember what, what, you remember what it sold for, Lisa. It was, it was a lot. It was like, whoa. I called him and he was pretty much doing backflips. Yeah, it was insane. Could have bought it for like 50 bucks. I think it went for a couple grand. We're not really talking about business. But that's okay. That is okay. I'm just having fun taking a break from, uh, from work here. So, guys, this has been fun. I might need to do this in the, every evening just to talk about Q and a or cats in boxes and cutting kids hair. <laughs> I don't know. Like this is supposed to be about business, small business Q and a, but you guys, I'll go wherever you're leading me to whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about, um, but here's what I'll close with. Unless you all have other questions, I'll be happy to sit here and, and talk with you a few more, a few minutes longer. Um, if you're a small business owner, uh, you've got to be creating content right now. You got to be talking to your customers. You got to be talking to your clients. Um, oh man, this, I got to show this. Yeah. It really makes you happy to make people happy. It's one of the best perks of the job. It absolutely is. Um, and Lisa, I th or Chris, I think Kim will certainly attest to this. I'm sure Lisa's heard me say this in the past. And I know Ryan, if he's still on, has heard me say this. Like that's the, that's the most important thing about the business that we're in. Yes, it's cool to make money. It's nice to make money and you have to make money in order to feed your family. That's part of the process. But you know, one of the reasons that Americans are so unhappy, it's not just Americans, it's people worldwide is because of a lack of job satisfaction without job satisfaction. You really have no purpose without purpose. You have no life. It's just it's uncanny to be able to help people consistently and help people solve problems on a daily basis. I tell people all the time, we're not a real estate and auction company. That's just the title. We're a problem solving company. And I wish I could call it JD's problem solving company. People just wouldn't really know what it was about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just so, so imperative. How fast do you think Zillow and the other online real estate value services will keep up? with the upcoming change in the real estate market as soon as we get everyone up and running full blast. Yeah, you know, it's it's an algorithm that both Zillow and Realtor.com have in place is the algorithms don't get updated fast enough because it requires humans to update those algorithms in order to determine a value of that piece of real estate, right? So that's the first problem with Zillow and Realtor. The second problem is the human aspect is taken away. If, if Zillow continues to go down the road that they're saying they're going to go down, and Chris, I'm assuming you know what they've been talking about, is I've said it, and it's, it's in our intro for a lot of our videos, it's people don't do business with companies People do business with people, and that's what's important. Now, there are people certainly who'll do who'll sell something because they're getting a top price because maybe someone submitted an offer. Yeah, that happens. But generally speaking, people want to do business with people and not just a company. So they're not. They're never going to catch up. They're never going to get it until they open brick and mortar or brokerage firms or they really employ a bunch of agents to be able to work on their behalf. Now, when you see, when we start seeing that happen, then we really need to step up and take notice for sure. Helping people is why I do this job and real estate. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, that's I mean, that's just that's it. Period. End of story. That is it. Uh, Brandon, hey, buddy. Good to see you on here, man. Uh, we rent in Alcoa and would love to buy. Hey, Brandon, I tell you right now, you got to be looking. You, you got to be watching because um, there are opportunities right now to buy. There's also a lot of opportunities to sell. Um, but a lot of people are kind of on the fence and they're teeter tottering both forward and back. Um, Brandon, I'll tell you, Kim, she's an agent of ours. She can certainly reach out to you, um, to see what you can, uh, what she can find for you. I wish, you know what we got to do, uh, Kim and Ryan, let's, let's work with one of our mortgage lenders. Let's get them on the, on a call this week. Gosh, it's not one of ours, but it's one of people that we know in the mortgage lending industry. Let's get them on a call. Ryan, work with Kim. You guys set it up, coordinate it, and, and I'll be just let me know. We can't do it Wednesday. Let's try to do it Thursday around lunch or even on Friday. Um, let's set up a call and for people just like Brandon. Um, if he doesn't already have one, that's step one is let's, let's find a good mortgage uh, mortgage agent, a loan officer for him to start working the paperwork that he's going to need. If he needs some credit help, then let's work that. So let's just figure that piece out. Um, so Brandon, great, great, uh, great thought there. Ready to buy. Um, thanks for putting that thought in my mind. Um, where do you want to buy it in Alcoa? Is it where do you want to buy on the Maryville side? You want to stay in Alcoa School District or you want to go Maryville School? Big difference, as you know. And I say that because. Um, if you're buying a piece of property and you have kids or you don't have kids, you got to be thinking about school districts that you're buying in. Um, strictly for one reason, the average American stays in their home for seven years. That's not Jason's deal's opinion. That's fact. Um, look at look up. Just just do a Google search on it. But National Association of Realtors put that all over their site. So you got about seven years. You're going to be in your home. Look at your family situation. Are you going to have kids in the next seven years? Are your kids going to be out grown out of the house in seven years? Kind of where you're going to be. And then take that into consideration when you're buying a home. Springbrook. OK. Yep. Um, we got we actually have an agent who lives um, back behind the school on the Miracle side. So um, if Kim may not know that area well, but we'll uh, it's Larry Williams. He will. He'll know that area. Awesome. Yeah. Shoot us. Uh, um, Brandon, shoot me an email. It's JD at JDS And let's see if I can put it in here. And uh, we'll see if I can't get you set up. We can help you. Maybe we can. All right, guys, what else we got? <clears throat> Anything else? It's been fun. 37 minutes. Wow. This time flies. I guess time flies. When we're having fun. Great, Kim. Line that up. Work with Ryan and get that lined up. Let's get that lined up this week. I want to. I want to get someone on here. It's just going to be Q and A too. That's all I want. Just Q and A. I don't want a script. There is absolutely no. I don't want them to come prepared to talk about. I don't want them to have an agenda. I just want Q and A for people just like Brandon to be able to ask a question. I'm renting. What do I need to do? What's step one? Right. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Cool, guys. Well, I need to get back to work. I've got uh, several ads. Oh, man. Now, now Chris is making me hungry. I, I'm going to have to get home. I think Natalie just made some vanilla bread. Um, yeah, well, I think she said vanilla bread. I had a bite of it. It was great. The banana bread is awesome. I love it. Awesome. As you guys are awesome. I'll tell you what. Um, let's plan on... We'll do. We'll, we'll, I'll try to do one of these a day through Friday. Um, I'm gonna try to do them earlier because I'm not. I'm gonna try to go home earlier than 9 p.m. Uh, if I can. That's the goal. So we'll try to hop on maybe midday uh, or maybe even first thing in the morning this week. So hop on if you got any questions. Share this video, and it's all about small business Q and A. Have a great night, guys.